Hey guys, it's Cody Nelson again with Cover Crop Kings. Just wanted to come back out here in a new 60 inch cornfield. Uh, this is one that we have not yet seen. So we're out here in Trent, South Dakota. Um, this was actually, this corn was actually planted in late, uh, or early June, I guess. And it was interseeded uh, when the corn was knee high. So uh, we put a mix here of annual ryegrass, uh, winter cereal rye, there's some sun hemp, there's buckwheat, there's some uh, radishes, or turnips, excuse me, and flax, there's hairy vetch, and there's some red clover in this mix. So anyways, we, we, we do have mostly cool seasons, so it's not like that past video. Uh, this is really going to flourish come late season. And I want you to look, we're still seeing really good weed suppression here in this, in this mix. Uh, this was, there was no residual herbicide used. It was just a burn down at right at planting time or shortly thereafter planting of corn. And then this was came that we just came back here and interceded uh, directly into that. But really want to focus again on plant health. I know we, we keep hammering at home, but we're seeing a lot better plant health in, in these wider rows. And why is that? That keeps getting asked. And I think the uh, big reason is we're getting sunlight clear down, uh, further down on the plant. Uh, we're collecting more solar energy. Uh, we're seeing more photosynthesis occurring because more of the leaves are actually capturing sunlight. So that's part of it. We're also seeing better air movement. So as we get rows closer, we're gonna see more stock rot issues. But, but this stuff is actually really kind of really flexible. We're not gonna have uh, plant health issues stock health issues in, in corn with space like this. So this particular field uh, is, is seeded at 26,000 population. Um, and that's so, so they doubled that and shut off every other row. So, uh, but you can see we're, we're, we're set up. Things are looking really, really good. Uh, we've got a nice cover crop stand. Uh, we can't wait to see how this works next year. Now we've got lots of, lots of options. Um, whether we want to come back into soybeans again so we should also talk about what are some of these some of these cover crops doing and with the annual ryegrass in here i want to talk on that everybody should know the difference if you're using cover crops there's a huge difference between annual ryegrass and winter cereal rye and to tell the difference right now at this stage uh, you can really see uh, here's the shinier stuff the shinier leaf that is your annual ryegrass and kind of the wider, duller leaf is, is your winter cereal rye. Uh, so what, what we're trying to do there, there's almost nothing that breaks up surface compaction better than your, than your annual ryegrass. Uh, your winter cereal rye will really do a good job of doing the same thing next spring. After, after it goes through the vernalization process and elongates, and then those roots will really start to take off next fall, or next spring, excuse me. Uh, so the buckwheat, we're doing, buckwheat's doing several things. It's bringing in some pollinators, uh, bringing in some beneficial insects. It's also very, very good at cycling phosphorus and making phosphorus that's on available, uh, available to the next cash crop. So uh, we got lots of things going on. Uh, we've got some species in here that are, that are gonna be beneficial for the mycorrhizae. So we're trying to get that colonization quicker um, with, by stimulating the diversity. So there's lots of benefits here. Uh, you could you could graze this this fall um, or even next spring, but but even for those that this particular field will not be grazed either. Uh, some of the some of the fields we're working on we will be grazing, but but these this particular one will not. So uh, what 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 the goal is is eventually we'll get this this field into a small grain, um, and then we'll come back harvest a small grain. We'll get a big cover crop after the small grain and, and then we'll bring a whole bunch of livestock here and, and graze that then so and then we can really get into the nutrient cycling and and starting to really cut back on on inputs on especially purchased nutrients so there was no insecticide there was no seed treatment on this corn um, this is a conventional corn hybrid so uh, really a, a low cost system here and, and things are looking really, really good. So uh, this is a first year no-till. So last year was soybeans uh, and then was brought back, brought into no-till here, uh, year one this year. So 
And uh, now we're incorporating the cover crops. Normally I'd like to get the cover crops incorporated prior to going to no-till, but uh, sometimes we just don't want to wait. I, you know, we got several producers starting to understand the value of, of leaving the residue in place. And, and it's uh, just showing a lot of, we're, we're starting to see the negative implications of, of getting those tillage implements uh, throughout the field. So I want to do whatever we can to, to uh, speed up this soil health process so we can, we can start to cut back on, on more of these added inputs and, and start to increase your net profit on your farm. So if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. You can look up more information on our website. Our website's www.soilrx.net. Uh, you can email any questions. Uh, email us at www.soilrx1 at gmail.com. Make sure you like the video, hit the subscribe button below, and uh, we'll keep bringing you videos, and we appreciate it. From Cover Crop Kings, have a good day.